being about six o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, are there any changes or additions made to the agenda? Uh, yes, we need to talk about <clears throat> reissuing the R5 for the broadband coverage. Okay. And, and that will be in new business. Okay. And any public input? Um, yeah. Um, I'm here because I got some further information regarding um, the broadband issues. And so, because I know public comments now, I would rather wait in, until that topic comes up and then I could be asked if you want me to. Great. Yeah. Thank okay. you for letting us know. Okay. okay. Bruno? The cemetery committee is a question of the selectmen. Uh, do, does the town cover cemeteries as far as insurance? Hmm, I think so. Um, well, we can ask Primex to... In case something happened, if a tree came down or something. That was one of the questions we were asked on Tuesday. I have a message in with uh, Primex, and they probably get back to me tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, I asked them that. Oh, you did? Okay. Yep. I couldn't remember if you were going to do that or not. Yep. That's on my list of things to do. Great. Well, it looks like it's being taken care of, and we'll let you know the results from that. Thank you. Any other public? I, I just came in tonight. There's this discussion later on, but also about the uh, transfer station freestanding building for the bathroom. I uh, just might be able to give some input on that when it comes to be uh, a okay. question about placement. Great. So. And any other public input? All right, hearing none, we're going to move on to the new business. Um, first thing on the agenda is the bathroom bid discussion. So we have um, both of the low bid um, contractors here for being part of the discussion, which I think is great. So thank you both for being here. Do we have, what's, what's the order with the new information? Well, what do we have to talk about first? Yeah. I would suggest you have a site discussion before yeah. going into um, the bids. Uh, which is new today. Just thank you guys. I've got a copy of the septic plans and the plans that went out for the bids on the building and compared those to the, the larger conceptual plan for transfer station improvements to see how they all fit together. And it, it seems there was no coordination of how the things fit together. Um, the septic plan shows the septic line going to the existing transfer station building. But what was put out to bid was a freestanding building. I think that's fairly easy to fix. The line can, can go wherever it goes, but um, if the building goes where it's tentatively sp supposed to go, uh, it gets in the mid right in the midst of the traffic flow for the future transfer station improvements, so it's not a good location. Um, and I think, I hope everybody realizes the, the bigger transfer station improvements are not a done deal. Um, it's not a done deal until you put something out to bid in your water contract. And so we, it hasn't been designed yet, so it hasn't been bid out to, to be awarded. And if the price was exorbitant, who knows if it would be approved. It might not be. But at least if we have a, a, a bathroom proposal now, it would be best to put that bathroom in a place that doesn't get in the way of what might happen a year from now or two years from now. Um, we met on site today, and uh, Glenn's preference all along, he indicated, was to have an addition on the existing building. Why build a freestanding building? He said he was told uh, straight out it has to be a freestanding building. He couldn't recall who told him that or why. But For the that, ARPA funds, he was under the impression. But we're doing an addition at the rec. At the rec. So, I, so I assume that it's design. not an issue. Yeah. And it and and it seems to go well with the septic plan because the septic plan shows the line starting from the existing building. So I don't know why a freestanding building was specced. Uh, it would make more sense if you have a building and you need a bathroom and the people using the bathroom work in that building, why would you build the building 40 feet over there? It should be part of the building that you already have. The other concern that Glenn brought up about um, the proposed site so far is that that's where all the snow goes in the wintertime, and mm. he really doesn't see how he could clear the whole lot without piling it up um, at the proposed site. So 
I think even just with that, we have to think about another location. But I do think that it makes a lot of sense to just, <coughs> if it can be, to be an addition onto the pre-existing end. The other good thing about that is when you line it up with the proposed plans for the improvements, that whole lot is not used for anything. It still is a green space. It's still carved out as just open. So it allows, I mean, people still drive around that. The pavement didn't change. So it seems buildable to not be in the way in the future mm -hmm. as well. The, the problem with it is it, it would require a new RFP because it's a different, it's not a freestanding bill. Right. right. Um, it would probably, it might cost a little less. Sometimes working on an existing building costs more. But either way, it's different enough. The bids don't don't relate to an addition to an existing building. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't want to slow things down, but it just, uh, not enough thought seemed to have gone into the location of the building. Uh, so my thought is we need to rebid that. I guess with the contractors here and hearing that discussion, is it something that you think you could reconsider your proposal enough to fit with the changes or is it something that's just totally different and I mean it's obviously different but is it different enough or the same enough that you could work with it or is it so different that it's I don't think any steps to work with it. I mean, you're talking adding on to the existing building. Yep. And essentially so, building so a set of plans would need to be drawn up. Right. Spec sheet. Spec'd out and then goes back up to bid. Yeah. Um, do we know, are there any restrictions on the timing for building under the Well, the funds will be 2024, but I don't know what the, I mean, that's when, when they stop sending money, but is there any, so you can build between now and 2024, presumably? I don't know. I don't know. know. That's okay. my understanding, but it is a limited understanding. Okay. Uh, Linda is waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, it sounds like we start over on the transfer station yeah. bathroom. I think so. Yeah. Do we, w they were separate bids, so we could still award the rack. Right. Um, you certainly would get, it makes sense to award it all at once, but I'd rather not wait on one because we have to slow down on the other. Well, and that is the thing, is that we wouldn't have to slow down the process process really necessarily that much because they got to be working they can't work on both projects at the yeah. same time anyway yeah. so there's that <laughs> we don't have to slow down <coughs> one project from happening just mm -hmm. because there's a hiccup in the other one and I don't know what was the process to get the plans the design plans for the transfer station building I know they were done by cobalt that's all I know but I don't know how that happens but I think that needs to be redone Okay. As, as I think it was done, in, done before we got it. Was big, yeah. It was when I was here, but I honestly don't remember. Tim, do you remember how that plan ended up? Put an Someone picked that design. site before I started here. Mm -hmm. I assumed it was engineered, and I didn't know anything about this. I figured in the last three months somebody would have said something. But I know. I apologize That's to you okay. today. But, but um, I didn't realize well, that you had it. I feel bad for these guys. Yeah. Yeah. So... And I found out where the location was today. So it was just lack of communication, really. How, I think, uh, Mr. Streeter, Mr. Hounsell, how do you feel about working with, uh, instead of bidding on both jobs at the same time, working, going ahead with a, the, with a bid just for the rec, knowing that we're uh, going to have to work to get the drawings done to, and the spec sheet so that you can, we can put the transfer station out to bid. Well, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, both quotes that I gave were separate from each other. No, no, I know. So they can be approached separately. Separately? Okay. okay. Yep, I agree. Okay. Okay. Just so we know that we can make a decision on what we can, mm -hmm. and then... And so I, I don't know how long it took to to design the freestanding building for the transfer station, or how that process to procure that was done. So we need to look into that. Hopefully it didn't take very long. Right? <laughs> I don't think it probably did take very long. Yeah. I think it sort of just 
maybe happened. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> since we've been talking about Tim acting also in his role as kind of a project manager for the town, does that mean that Tim is the person who reaches out to, who is it that did the Get designs? a new design. Get a new design. Well, you can use anyone, but... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. But does that fall under your? I can do it. sure. Okay. And then I think just having Glenn be like part of the design in that building, just because he is still very much a part of that building. So where he would need doors and you know sure. stairs and storage and all of that, I just think that it would be really good to have. Since he's already using that structure, you know, it's not like we can just change the layout or, you know, oh, now a door is here and, you know, I don't know. I just. When you're approaching designers, probably um, timing would be one of the things to consider who could get to it. I mean, if, I would think so. Yeah. yeah if, 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 if you went back to Cobalt and they said, well, we could do it next December, then you know, <laughs> probably go with something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look around. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, our apologies about the, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. So, do you want to ask um, these two gentlemen about Brett, the Brett. 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 Yeah, I would like to discuss that, Ted. There's one thing I want to point out about the summary that I did. Okay. Um, I, Brad had made a suggestion about re-roofing, and I included that 7000 So that's not, that's the only number that's not apples to apples. So really, you should take his price down by 7 to have them be comparable. Otherwise, they're comparable. See that okay. 7 Yep. Okay. So I think what we're comparing is 134 and change to 115 and mm -hmm. change. Well, that's for no, the, that's for the two. Both. Oh, yeah. So 46, 46 403, and there's a different, there's a couple different methods too. Mm. The yeah. So, the, like oh. the foundation, for instance. The foundation is different. So. Yeah, they both have a different idea for the foundation. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Or? Sure, it was... Um, I know Brad was thinking a... You know, like a poured foundation and everything. And Jay, what, it was a... Uh, it's like a block design, right? That's the same one? Yeah. And are you thinking a block for the whole addition? No, that was just for the transfer station. Right. Okay. These would be pretty okay. similar yeah. okay. wood yep. construction. <coughs> I know um, Jay's included a somewhat of a lean-to. It could be right. in a shorter... It wouldn't be as big as the one... I mean, it could be, but he was thinking make it shorter. And then Brad, yours doesn't have a lean-to. Well, I did put them there. Should be a price on them. Yeah, yeah. The lean-to's the lean okay. there. He so did add that, If you yes. add the three numbers, it's um, about 54000 for Brad's and forty six for Jay's. Okay. But those are the major differences. The interiors would pretty much be identical, except for the tile, right? Right. I went uh, ceramic tile on the floor. Yep. So there are some differences. And then what would your floor be, Brad? Just be concrete. That's what we spec'd out on the plan, so... Yeah, yeah it would be like a finished one. Well... <laughs> so there'll be, like, bathrooms very similar to this one right here. Just a box. Mm -hmm. ADA bathroom. Yeah. Okay. And the one at the transfer station will be ADA compliant as well. Right? Okay. Yep. I mean, it's got to be. I mean, yeah. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. 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 yeah I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and 
the siding will be blended into the siding that's there. Right. Yeah, it'll look like. Look all the same. Yeah. <coughs> And does it matter for your storage if the lean to shortened? No, that that's actually it was uh, that was an ask by Dan, the rec director. Oh, it's not for your. Well, it's for I guess <clears throat> everyone's that like the tr a couple trailers and yeah, just out, outside storage for the winter. Mm -hmm. Something that you don't want to get like completely buried yeah. with snow, but it's okay to stay outside. It would be nice, but if not, that's you know that's okay too. And could you remind me, Mr. Council, why the lean-to was shortened? Was something about the way the roof line butt up? Is that it? Well, the way the original plan was drawn, in order to extend that uh, lean-to the whole length, uh, including the addition, mm -hmm. you had to have something support the lean-to beyond the existing building. Mm -hmm. That means you had to cr build that wall up or that roof line up to be able to pick that up. Mm -hmm. Short, uh, so I didn't change the quote based on anything, but I suggested that if you shorten the lean to up yeah. and change your roof design on your addition, you're going you're, you're gonna to pare down the cost considerably. And Brian, do you have the lean to go on that full length with <coughs> support? At I did not. Lean to would be the same length as the building existing. Yeah, no, that's the way I figured it as well. Okay. I, I mean, there's I, definitely ways to cut money. Oh, yeah. Because the plan that was given out was very vague. Very, <laughs> very vague. I mean, very difficult roof line. So. But I think in comparing everything, Brad and I both figured the lean to the whole length of the building. Mm -hmm. So I think I think they're comparable bids. Oh yeah. I'm just trying to see if there is any difference in where it is, if there is any. Is all I'm trying to. Do... <clears throat> I think if you add in, if you add up the numbers, then there, those are the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just to pick your brains a minute, what would what was not on those uh, plans that would have made it easier for you to have a bid? Since Tim's going to be asking for the next set of plans, what what was missing from this this set? Any fixture was not called out. Okay. A certain door was not called out. No hardware called out. I mean, they were schematic, not construction drawings. Right. They were basically, you were looking at a request for proposal that would meet ADA compliant and the energy compliant, mm -hmm. but there's a vast variety of materials mm -hmm. that can do that. Mm -hmm. But like with this one, you're trying to meet up with what's already there. So some of the things are decided, like the siding that you put on right. and the material right. that you're using. And right. And the addition didn't warrant the same design that I did up to the uh, uh, transfer station, so right. we went, I went with the conventional framing as it would only make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, to be in a motion, if there aren't other questions, right? So it looks like the price difference is around seven thousand dollars, and the household bid is the lower bid. Mm -hmm. I make a motion for the contract to check the house. Second. We've already had the discussion, so I'm going to do a roll call vote. Did you say second, yes? Second. What's that? Yes. I voted yes. Oh, <laughs> I didn't understand you. Oh, I'm sorry. I said the discussion has been had, so I'm just going to do the oh, roll okay. call vote. Okay, all right. Um, uh, Bear, yes. Prentice, yes. Goodson, yes. All right. Thank you for coming in. Before the gentleman that bid on both leave, would it be possible for them to consider uh, doing the building design themselves in noticing that they need to comply with the ADA um, instead of sending it off to some 
guy that's going to draw this set of plans that isn't going to give you full specifications of doors, windows, all that stuff. They're just going to give you a box and say you've got to do it like this. Um, would there be something that you would be able to do yourselves and then present to the board in an RFP presentation saying, we know it's going to be handicapped accessible, we, certain dynamics have to be there. Would that be easier for you guys and not hold up as much time? Just a question. I, I, I can honestly answer that I would not want to try to design an okay. addition up there that would comply with what was intended in the original building, okay. which was, you know, the safe, for safety reasons, a shower, yep. and uh, the uh, ADA-compliant fixtures, and the door sizes, and the kitchen layout. Now, when you're talk, talking an addition, to, if you try to pick all that same stuff up again, yeah. and someone needs to design it that knows what they're doing. Okay. All right. I just right. was so check and see. Right. Just going to save time and money. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if the town wants the same bids, well, people bidding on the same thing, right. something needs to be drawn out and handed out. Yeah. Okay. Because if we draw something totally... You know, when it goes out to bid, you have to know what... Right. The, well, you have to have at least have an idea of what the, what they're looking for. Yeah. You can do an RFP based on, and we did on these last two blueprints. Right. But they were, you know, they they were just that blueprints, <clears throat> no spec sheets, yeah. no no nothing, just blueprints. Mm -hmm. And that's what an RFP does, and it relies on the contractors who are obviously going to put their name on it to make it comply. But it also leaves you wide open for right. a yeah. myriad of problems. Yeah, not problems, but well, differences in pricing, right. yeah. differences in approach. Yeah. Yeah. If you want apples for oranges, yeah. that's what you had. Right. That's but if you want apples for apples, hire someone to tell you what you want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. I just. And that's why I think for the larger transportation improvements, we would not have an RFP. We would hire somebody to design it and bid it. So you would not get estimates, but bids, uh, and then all the materials would be spec. So that takes more time and money to get there, but then you really know what you're bidding on and paying for. Are you saying a design build? No, it would be, you could go either way, but, but my guess would be it would be a design, and then the second step is, is the construction. Okay, so, okay. It would be separate design. But with then. construction drawings. My, opinion, my personal opinion is if you had an architect who had an engineer who presented it to you in, in a professional manner, and you put it out to bid, you would be able to get legitimate bids from everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you go to the design build or even construction management, you don't know what you exactly you're going to get. Right. Because even a construction manager is only looking out for the bottom line because that's how he gets paid. Uh, prime example of that is substitutions that were made at Kennedy High School on Windows. <laughs> that decision made by a construction manager. Mm -hmm. Your true Legitimate process is an architects with engineers and general contractors who take responsibility for the job. Now, why didn't this happen happened before? Why are we doing this now? That's a, that's a good question. You know, I think that I already apologize for a lack of communication. When you have a town that has so many different working compartments, it's extremely hard to know who knows what and what knows who and it is extremely complex and mistakes do get hap like do happen and this is obviously one of them at least you acknowledge when a mistake has happened and move forward and try to fix it then to just be like oh gosh now we have to you can't just you I know I would suggest if I name, um, yeah. Jim, uh, the best way is to have a building committee and then those people will bounce off each other those things that need to be talked about before it goes out to the selectmen to make the decision to put it out to bed. You usually can get people that are willing to volunteer and participate in that type of dialogue so that you know this is what we're presenting and you go forward from there. Mm -hmm. that one more layer that protects the mm -hmm. town and the, and the contractors. And what we did decide last week was that, so we have a person um, in a new role a new that we role. that the town hadn't had before, and Tim just started in October, end of October? No, I think it was no. August. August. Um, 
And so part of Tim's responsibility now is to take this on, but we just decided that last week as we were trying to figure out how to cleanly make this process work. So. And are building committees typically a standing committee for whatever construction is happening, or is it By project. Is it for this project? It can be either way. You could have a, a, a committee that's appointed to, to overlook your whole project and make sure everything's tied together, or you can just pick a project and have a group of people that are making sure that when it's finally put out to bid, the town's getting what they expect, and the contractors know what to, what to bid on. Well, my mind just went to is at some point in the process, maybe T6, you know, mission might cover that. But right now, T6 has <clears throat> been so focused on, I mean, that's just what it is, Bruno. It's just that all these people have been thinking about this and not a lot of this has been happening. And you can't have soup unless you put all the ingredients together and you make it. It looks to me like you put the cat before the horse. That's what it looks to me. I don't, I don't think it was done by my Yeah, it wasn't done. I don't before. think it was done to be the cart before the horse. <coughs> what happened was we got the septic plans and I happened to look at the septic plans and I said, oh, the tank for the septic field is going to set right where we're going to have truck traffic if, this, if we develop the rest of the site. And it'll be right in the middle of what needs to happen, anything future to the site. So then we looked at where the building was going to set, and they said, oh, it's going to be somewhere over there, and that's going to take up another chunk of piece, that, so you won't be able to do anything. So it would, and Richard and I just discussed that yesterday briefly, and then today looking down at the transfer station said, yeah, this is going to be a, an issue if you put the building in the tank there. It just ties up a whole big area of potential future use and unfortunately the plans were given to the septic designer for the big thing but he somewhat missed the point I guess that's what I'll say well so building <laughs> thing thank you for the serious I mean I guess for right now that's exactly what it would have to be and we'd have to discuss about would it just be for one project and then what about all of the other projects that are you know i mean if i think building committee for the town it's like it's a big project don't you think tim a little bit like you could go over a certain number like five thousand no ten thousand dollars like something for, this is massive do you think a building committee would be like per project or do you see a building committee being more like almost like permanent Permanent for all. And then they would only have to convene when you have projects, which isn't a lot in this town. Yeah. And then you would meet with that committee. Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So something like that is. I mean, I guess, and that's what it is. Is like this whole position is brand new to the town. We've never even had a Tim. We had a select person that stepped in beforehand, and thank goodness for them. Um, we've had to select people step in for all sorts of different things that the town needed, and thank goodness. But, you know, I don't think that it's the solution for the future and the solution for the town and the best way for things to be running. Obviously, if there's, you know, this miscommunication happening, obviously there's a problem, right? Can we put on an agenda for maybe the next meeting talking about the idea of a building committee and what it might look like, and then that gives us a little time to... Maybe see how other towns do it. Talk to Tim. Tim can think about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, because we've got other things on the agenda, this is kind of a left turn, yep. that we could come back to it after we've percolated a little bit. Okay. Good. I just have a question. On the new RFP for this, this will be open again to everyone, like, so Brad could bid on it again. Yeah. And yeah. 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 yeah, it would be open to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussions? Again, my apologies. And moving on. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, appointments to the Transfer Station Improvement Committee. Billy Farnham is going to discuss that. I sent out a note to the town administrator, to Keats, and uh, the issue that's come up a little bit is the Transfer Station Improvement Committee is a town-appointed committee, and the membership 
if you limit the membership down to five, uh, three makes a quorum. Oftentimes there's Kelly, Richard, myself, myself or somebody, a couple other people trying to work on a, per, a certain portion of the project such as writing a grant. You have to call that to a meeting, keep minutes of your work on writing the grant, the whole exercise that has to go on is difficult. So Kelly has been listed as a selectman's representative. Well, that doesn't necessarily give her a vote. She might be a representative, but doesn't necessarily give her a vote. So my recommendation was is that Kelly be appointed a full member, and I think it was make sure that Richard is appointed as a full member, not as an alternate, and that Emery Roberts be appointed as an alternate. And then our meeting notice would say there may be a quorum of the Board of Selectmen present, but it's not a selectman's meeting. And you wouldn't have at any point uh, three selectmen making any decisions that the TSIC would make. In other words, it wouldn't be saying, yeah, we want to investigate this particular grant. Let's have a vote to do that. Go ahead and do it. There wouldn't be three selectmen ever making a vote on that. There might be two, but not three. So, so everything it, would have to come to the select board anyway that needs to, to put the grant in. But I mean, to do the legwork before right. we bring it to the select board to put it in, mm -hmm. it just simplifies a lot of the bureaucracy of it and it keeps a clean line of who's actually voting members. So Emery's the, the select board alternate. So he, No, he is an alternate to the thing. He happens to be a selectman. Just like Richard right. is a selectman, but he is a member of TSIC. Kelly would be a member of TSIC. They are also select. So you would you could have a scenario though where you would have three selectmen voting. Yeah. No, yes. he's not a voting member. No, because because if the he's thing an is, is he wouldn't be an alternate unless one of these two were missing. Well, that's what I was I mean, asking. He's a select a selectman alternate, right. not a TSIC alternate. He could be, no, he could be a TSIC alternate. But if he's a TSIC alternate and you were absent, then he could, there could be three selectmen voting. If no, he's a select board rep, else out. Yeah, if he's a select board rep alternate, yeah, the, he could be at the meetings, but over that. he could be at the meetings, but not member vote. Member versus selectman yeah. rep. That's, that's, that yeah. uses me pretty regularly. I think the one thing that, that TSIC is looking for is, is, is for the board to take one action, appoint Kelly as a member. Period. That changes the quorum from three to four. No, to, th to three. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. to four. Because six, three is not a quorum, because it's not 50, over 50%, 51%. I think that's the only specific change that's being made. Yeah. And then get them listed accordingly on the website, so it's right. But we'll deal with that and get the other part done. And it seems, it seems, it seems like a small item to me. If, if the committee wants six or 27, I don't care. I'm just like that people want to volunteer. So if, if the committee wants six as opposed to five, I don't see a time frame. So I make a motion to, to appoint Kelly as a full member to TSIC. Second. The discussion's already happened, so we'll just go right into the roll call vote. You said yes. Very yes. Prentice, yes. yes. And Kelly abstains. <laughs> No, I have to have sticky. Oh, All right. So we're going to move on to the broadband. And if I can, one oh. other, yep. other TSIC thing just to bring you up to speed. I talked with uh, Donna Lane today, who was a grant administrator. And uh, I had a not a terribly long conversation with her, but she was helpful in the fact that she said that our next step really needs to be to put out an RFQ for an engineer. And that's request for qualifications of an engineer. Because um, I had called her and said, you know, we've got this grant, we need to administer it. And her comment was is that if you do the RFQ according to the requirements, you will get someone who is qualified to do that administration piece of the work as the engineer. So that will save... The grant administration the, It would do the grant administration work as part of the... Um, the responsibility of the qualified engineer. So I'm going to try and get from USDA what their guidelines are on qualified engineers, and she said that she would help in making sure that the 
RFQ that we put out would be the correct RFQ and go to the right places to get the right people. Because the USDA probably has specific requirements as to how that's supposed to happen. Right. So I just sort of wanted to forewarn you that that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks or so. That's exciting. And actually, we haven't talked about this, but I, she used to be my neighbor, Donna Lane, oh. in Madison. She, her business is she helps communities with federal grants, particularly community development block grants all over New Hampshire. So she understands the grant, federal grant process better than anybody in the room is my guess. She's done it for 40 years, but she said that she wouldn't be able to do this for us. And not because, it's because it's not a CBGA or CBGC yeah. grant. It's a USDA grant or something. But she's, she's smart and she's willing to give us a little bit of help. She's helped us with three grants in town. Okay, great. So, anyway. Well, thank her for us. Yep. Please. I will, and I'll follow up on that. Thank you, Lily. So we're going to go into broadband um, and talk about the broadband committee CCCDPC <laughs> appointment discussion. Yes. <laughs> do you want me to? Do you want to talk about Leanne, or do you want me to? I I don't happy want to talk to about it. it. I'm happy <laughs> to have you talk about it. And then we will get input from um, Pat. 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 Yeah. Um, so the Carroll County Communications District Planning Committee, which is. <laughs> I didn't even attempt. <laughs> uh, was formed, um, was actually, um, came out of a project that Pat is a committee member of, which is the Carroll County Broadband Committee. Um, this, the CCC DPC is, um, uh, represents, I think, 19 towns, and uh, has a member from two, two members from each town, and is um, set up to create the uh, communications district. The communications district will be one of three in the country. There's one in Vermont, one in Maine, and potentially one in Carroll County. And it's a it's a uh, does is a way to empower small t big communities with small towns to get internet access. Um, so that's the overall goal. Do you want to add anything, Pat? That's good so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are short one member. We have Cheryl um, hit, hit hit. She doesn't say hit hit hit. hit. Okay. Uh, Cheryl Hitt is a member of this, and we need one more member. It meets not even regularly right now, um, once a month or less. Cheryl is actively attending, so, um, you know, this person wouldn't have to go to all the meetings. And um, But we'd love it if they did. But we'd love it if they did. And, and they do have to be present. Apparently, you can't vote over Zoom. Um, so that is one aspect and they meet um, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. when they meet um, and I did say in this posting that it can be attended via Zoom I think I need to take it can be attended but you can't vote so I'm not sure how to word that um, so the idea is that we will post this description which I wrote up you reviewed and um, and see if we can get somebody to volunteer to be on that committee I think that's a great way to do public outreach and um, see if there's any interest in Okay, so I don't... And would the meetings of the district, I assume, will be separate from the meetings of the Carroll County Broadband Committee? Correct. Okay. Because that was, in our list of committees that the selectmen have a, a representative to, that that was confusing me from the start. So I, this is the first time I've really understood it all. Because uh, Emory is our rep, and I'm the alternate to the for the Carroll County Car Broadband, Broadband Committee, yeah. which right. essentially gave birth to the CCC right. DPC, exactly. mm -hmm. which will essentially give birth to the next thing, which is the, um, the district. The district. Mm -hmm. Right. right. But to give a little bit more, yeah. Um, just the, the the reason that they're formed that district, the two members of the com of the communities that are involved, they, there was a gift of um, a grant gift of. Thirty thousand dollars that was given them, and that was to pay for an expert who knows how to do bylaws, and therefore that was the goal to have all of those people meet and create bylaws for that district. The district. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing I was going to say. Um, Can I just clarify that? So the thirty thousand was given to the CCBC or the. I have no clue. So I got the money. I think that the, the Carroll County Broadband. Was able to enable that to happen, it, and, it, and it's being used by the CCCDPC for the person to actually um, help 
I choose okay. you to work mostly. So it isn't there's that much work for the people that are volunteering, mm -hmm. I don't, from what I can tell. I did talk um, after a while this afternoon. I spoke to the chairperson of the Cal County Pride Band to ask a, diff a little bit of a different question. And that is, um, there's the, the it, what was voted by the government, New Hampshire government, was regarding the, um, okay, the different people, the different groups that in fact provide internet service now. Um, we needed to like send letters to them and they needed to be worded just right. And I'll talk about the letter in a second. I've already printed it and using the one from the CCC. Okay, so the, what, what he said was, I said, here's the thing. After a certain, the, the law is that if one asks one of those providers for information as to what are the streets, what's the addresses, whatever, whatever, um, they have 30 days to answer. Mm -hmm. And um, if they don't answer, then the law is that therefore um, their service cannot be cl claimed by them. Mm -hmm. So if they, so we have one that did not answer that I'm thrilled because the less people, that the less quote official service that a small town has, mm -hmm. the better we are to qualify for rural and non-serviced non area. Mm -hmm. So Spectrum didn't answer. Mm -hmm. So I was telling this gentleman's name, Rick Highland. He's the chair of, of the um, Carroll County Broadband. What's so his he, last name? H-I-L-A-N-D, Highland. And um, he was saying to me, he said, make sure, he, I said, you know, a big question, Rick, is what do you do when you find out they didn't do it in the 30 days, what then? What are we supposed to do? And he said, nothing. <laughs> uh, but, but, but just the important part is to have great records. The, the records of the fact that we, ha that we know they received the letter, the date of it, the 30 days, and just so that if, if, it's, if they take the towns to court, because we're now ignoring them or whatever, mm -hmm. we're covered. You know, any town in Carroll County is covered. But he said, now, there was, an, there was a um, tweak to the way the letter was to be written. And so he said, do you know for sure that you've got the, la the latest one was sent? So here's the update on that. Um, we had sent the, RFP, the RFI letter out on uh, April 14th. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure of the source of that letter, uh, I don't know who actually wrote it. I received the new letter okay. from Cheryl Hitt okay. via the CCC DPC, okay. and it is the new and approved letter, and they are almost the same, but not exactly. There's a few wording changes. So Diane um, Jarecki said, send out the new RF, reissue the RFI. Yeah. So I'm going to, I have a letter for the select board to, to sign Tonight, said, with the lang with the approved language. Okay. Um, and they're very close, but there's yeah, a few said. key differences. There's a little bit more explanation of why they have to do it. And what well, there's just a few laws cited in the yeah. new letter that are could not. You um, could you send me a sure. digital copy of that? Rick asked me to, and that way he'll be happy. And I'll tell. And he said, if in fact they use the old letter, uh, it's not too late at all to send out the current one, which she's going to do. Could you even sign it? So when you say the excellent records have to be kept, that's by the CCBC or by the town? Town. Oh, yeah. So like all the letters are sent, sent via certified mail, mm -hmm. document any emails that are yeah. coming back and forth and all that. I'm just making sure with all the transitions. Yeah, yeah. That, it's, that that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, what I, that's yeah. why I wanted to clarify. Yeah. So it's union. Okay. Thanks, Pat. Well, you've been sticking with this for so long. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Someday it will happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're close. <laughs> Perseverance. So then that's the RFI reissue? Yep. Yep, okay, great. So now we're going to talk about a personnel policy committee. Mm -hmm. We have had two volunteers, um, Cheryl okay. Hitt great. and Linda Eldridge. Yeah, great. great. Yep. So good. Um, so... I don't know uh, what are the next steps in terms of getting that going. S How many members did we want? Well, we said three to five, I think. <coughs> right, with just two, it's hard to have a 
quorum and voting and the no, committee no, no. taking. Two is not and, enough. It yeah, right, just doesn't make a committee. Yeah, committee. Well, you're chairing it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. I, I volunteered. I don't know what the formality okay. is for approving that. So we, I don't think we went through that process. And then, were you hoping to be a voting member on that committee? Just well, to think about quorum. So and, my understanding is that. I guess my vision is, and we can talk about this, is that this is like this is a work committee to gather information, look at what we have in existence, draft and tweak, and then the voting happens at the board level. That's right. So, so you don't think edits happen and then they come to the board with the edits? You think the whole process happens at the board? No, 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 no. I'm saying we'll have work sessions, but I don't know what we would what we would vote on at the work sessions. We can notice the work sessions. That's not a problem. Just as a group, you decide that this is now edited enough that we're ready to. Yeah, it to like the board. just come to a consensus. Just trying to figure out how yeah. the committee would work. I mean, that was that's how that's how I worked on drafts in the past. Okay. That you, you know, you start out here deciding who's going to gather what information, you come together, you read or you want things and together, and you, you know, it's like a lot of conversation, reading and writing and revising, but that the voting on accepting any changes or, you know, <coughs> feedback from drafts would come to the board and be shared at, at the meetings, unless there's a different way that... I think the overall voting has to happen at the meeting, mm -hmm. at the select women level anyway. Mm -hmm. I guess I was just wondering what the process on the committee mm -hmm. side would be before it got to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. But if you think that the work sessions would be best to just nibble away at it and work as a group on the yeah. final, this is what our mission is. Once we have this taken apart and edited, we're going to bring this to the select board. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of kind of group re writing and rewriting for the town, for different boards, and that's kind of the process we've always used. Okay. I don't, I mean, you just talk it out, you know. Yeah. So if there's a question, you just come to consensus on it. Mm -hmm. And the decision's not the group's, any, the ultimate well, right, decision. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so we could, you know, continue to see if anybody else wants to get involved when they see how much fun we're having. People will be drawn to it, yeah. but um, or we can, you know, it's really just researching, reading, writing, revising, and we can just be meeting here doing it the three of us if that's all who steps forward. So do you want to go on another week on it and see if there's any more people that? Sure, we can do that. Revisit Maybe. it next week. Okay, so we one can always make three appointments now and add more later. I mean, I yeah. would definitely say that we um, make the appointments now and add later. Okay. So, so that we can, yep. you know, then at least Linda and Cheryl and I can be in touch. So, and if there's anybody else on the board who's interested in this, so we can, you know, maybe schedule a first meeting and then we can encourage um, other people who are interested to come to the board and they can jump in. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Everyone to step forward on that. So I make a motion that we appoint uh, Leanne Prentice, Linda Eldridge, and Cheryl Hitt to be our new personnel policy committee. Second. I think we've had the discussion. Is there any more? Okay, roll call vote. You said yes. Yeah, yes. Prentice abstain. Good and yes. Thank you everyone for stepping forward. That's how we get it done. TCNA committee appointment discussion. We're gonna get it done. <laughs> Um, so the discussion was to have two select board members, right, become part of the committee? Mm -hmm. I so. have decided I will do that. You, you will? will do that? We will do that. Oh, wonderful. Great call. Thank you, Carl. Great. Do we know if Emory was interested? He I certainly had, he had a fair amount to say. Um, yeah. When the board but we, under, I, we understand what his opinion is. Yep. So we can represent that. I feel I could do that. Okay. I mean, he's welcome. Yeah. I did not get a sense one way or another if he was interested. I think he's interested in the issue. Yeah. I didn't get a sense one way or another if he was interested in being. Oh yeah. No, um, being one of the committee members. I think he was just concerned about the expense mm -hmm. since we've already awarded TCNA money at town meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, for their operating expenses mm -hmm. that. 
he was concerned about awarding them <laughs> more money for this project, but mm -hmm. um, we know that, so we can keep that in mind. Well, my understanding, too, is that this is, I, I think that um, June really said that this is, this is not going to be a short and sweet process. Yeah. There's right. going to be lots of back and forth negotiations, so yeah. there will be regular reporting out at our meetings <clears throat> so that feedback from the rest of the board can yeah. be taken back to the table, right? So. I think we should reach out to Emery and see if he wants to be as well. If we want to, uh, if he's really concerned about cost and the process is collaborative with the TCNA board, then I think it would be best if the person who's most concerned about that issue is, is at the table when it's happening. Uh, at least find out if he's interested. So shall we wait? To I think we can certainly... Right, appoint him, but wait and, to and have to the other... <coughs> well, I know I personally am guessing that they're meeting during the daytime, and I won't be able to do that until there's snow on the ground. So that sort of leaves me out of a discussion, even though I obviously care about it. I just can't take on another thing right now, personally. So that's where I stand on it. But I'm so glad that you do, Carl, and I make a motion that we appoint Carl Baer to the TCNA committee. Second. And I think we've had the discussion, so we're just going to roll call vote. To say yes. Baer is staying. Prentice, yes. Goodson, yes. And then we'll revisit it with Emery when he's here. The CLC's traffic data collection devices on Chicago Lake Road. Sheldon Perry, thank you so much for being here to discuss that with us. Thank you for allowing me to do that. So, um, Sheldon Perry, I'm representing the Chicago Lake Conservancy. And as you all know, the Chicago Lake uh, access areas, uh, specifically the Grove area and the island area, which is halfway up the lake on the eastern side of the lake, off of Route 16, it has a lot of public pressure. And it's part of our mission, and we're very happy about that, um, to allow access. But the CLC would like to understand, through time, the traffic and trends, pedestrian, vehicular. So we have a, an understanding of what to expect, how much impact on that sensitive, those sensitive areas. And so we think the best way to do that is to monitor the traffic along the roads. And we did this last year through the town and through the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Um, it was for just a week. And, and honestly, um, that's not going to meet our needs. So what we'd like to do is to get our own traffic counting devices and to collect our own data. And initially that would be the Grove area, which would be, you know, as traffic gets off of Route 16, goes on to Shikara Lake Road, right there, and then just after the Narrows Bridge. So we get a an accurate data of who's actually vis visiting the grove itself. Th through time, we might want to do the same thing on the island along the old Route 16 road there. Mm -hmm. But so um, the essential question is, would the town have any objection for us to do that, for us to collect and essentially own our own data? We can share the data with you, and we'd be happy to do that. Um, but we would use the data as we would wish. And so we're, that, that's the essential re, uh, request. And, and am I correct in remembering that you talked to Richard Roberts about if it would infringe on any of his roads that he maintains? So, um, well, I wrote this letter, mm -hmm. and Richard has seen it. Yeah. And you have seen it. I, right, I thought I remember him being and, on it. And so I resent it along with the um, MOU that we had with Lakes Region and the town from last year's. Mm -hmm. And he did email me back. I have a copy of that. He has, that he has no objection to it. Okay. I mean, if I thought he had been informed. Yeah. So he he seems to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And. Um, 
you know, the, the inexpensive versions of the one of the classic, you know, pneumatic tubes along the roads. And I mean, if we haven't decided anything yet because we wanted permission from you folks first, but um, it's possible we'll get a more expensive one that would uh, be magnetic and it, it could be used all year round. Um, but, you know, obviously for winter plowing and everything, the pneumatic version would be inadequate in winter. But, we, you know, we want to do it for as long a period of time as we can practically do it. And I would think just wear and tear and all of that would also play a part in those new I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, that's a decision we would have to One make. unexpected snowstorm and, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So does that mean we need to to develop a new memorandum of understanding that supersedes the existing one? Well, that, that would be, I think, a good idea. Um, you know, we, obviously we... I mean, the intention is that it's not going to cost the town any money. We assume all the expenses. Um, for that privilege, we own the data, but we're willing to share it with anybody who would like it. I'm, I mean, we're, we're, I'm, I think we'd be very generous with, with that. Um, so, um, yeah, we send the old MOU and, and, and create a new one would be uh, probably a good idea. Mm. Just, just giving us the permission to do it. Yeah, and who writes the MOU? Um, Does that come from us? From well, it could come from us because we're the one that's um, doing the application here. So this is just like a point of reference for me. Um, when would you create a MOU versus simply taking a vote and saying we have no objection? Why does it need to go into a more formal realm than that? I, it's a great question. I, I um, for the sake of simplicity, um, if, if we have permission from the town road agent and we have permission from the board of selectmen and it's in the minutes mm -hmm. we're we're on our own right and obviously we would keep richard roberts in that loop right. so he knows what we're doing so it's not costing us money the road agent has said it's okay and it's not getting in their way it's not impeding the roadway it's not impacting anybody's use Idea. Yeah. I make a motion that we allow that. <laughs> Second. Allow the city seat, the uh, Scarborough Lake Conservancy, Conservancy traffic to data devices. count yeah. traffic on Scarborough Lake Road. <laughs> and do what they like with the data. Second. You might make that old trunk road too, right? What's that? I might make that the old trunk road too, as well as Scarborough Lake Road, because you want to be able to switch over to the other road. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. When you, you say the truck yeah, road, I'm trying to Trump. The island. The island. The old yeah, Route 16. The old Route 16. Yeah, yeah. 16. yeah I mean, I think... Should I add that to the... Yeah, I, I, would, I would prefer that because, you know, it, you the more data that we have, the probably the, the more informed we're going to be. And I, I, if we're going to take care of this, you know, to include both those areas. I mean, we're not going to concerned about the North Residence Beach. That's... Can... can can you rescind your motion and second? I'll rescind my motion. <laughs> I, I, what did I do? I, you did great because you're going to make another one in a second. Um, so is there any reason not, is there any reason that the motion shouldn't be town roads adjacent to or surrounding uh, Shakora Lake in the Conservancy land? I mean, are there are there Instead any other roads? That, are there any? Well, yeah. I'm just wondering, are there any other roads that it would expand to? No, I think. I think, just it, those I think two? it might be best to, to be very specific and just okay. say the Shakur Lake Road near the Narrows Bridge and Grove, mm -hmm. and the old Route 16 at what is referred to as the island. There you go, Carl. Make a motion that we allow the Shakur Lake Conservancy to monitor traffic count. On the old Route 16, 
near the lake, which is referred to as the island, and <laughs> either side of the Narrows Bridge yeah. on Chicago Lake Road. Called the Grove. You can, you can write that any way you like. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll watch the thing tomorrow. <laughs> a second, okay. and as part of my second, I would recommend maybe you, if you're thinking of buying equipment, maybe uh, check in with the Forest Service di District Ranger because they probably have some and could give you recommendations on what's good and what's bad. Thank you. What are you, what are you trying to do? What you, what's the end result? So the end result is, through time, <coughs> there's been a lot of debate back and forth as to you know, how much people are, are visiting our, our public areas. And we, we need data to really understand it. And so, and also to understand trends, you know, if it, if over ten years, um, we can we can see it's expanding, staying level, or or may, maybe even diminishing, which probably is not going to happen. But it just it just helps us to know what kind of pressures and what kind of infrastructure we need to do to protect the shoreline, and you know what kind of actions we might need to take to uh, protect those. You know, they are sensitive areas. All right, so we have a motion on the table. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. You said yes. Very yes. Prentice yes. Goodson yes. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Sheldon. Thanks for taking care of the lake. <laughs> All right, so moving on, we have a letter of acceptance. The New Hampshire State Liquor Commission, I believe it's regarding the bar store? It's regarding, uh, yes, to sell alcohol during intermission yep. in front of the theater. And this would be your six, I believe. Right, yeah, this is something that they do with us mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. You've all received a letter. Yeah. Do we have to make a motion to accept it, or are we just acknowledge just it? signing it. We're just signing it. Do we vote to sign it? Um, it's in the it's in the signatory folder. Typically, you vote to sign all those things. Right? No, I, let's just sign it. Yeah. Just sign it. Okay. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> you should have a vote. Okay. Willie wants a vote, so we're gonna have a vote. <laughs> Why not? Okay. So we're gonna make a motion. I make a motion to um, sign the letter of acceptance to New Hampshire State Liquor Commission for the Barnstormers. Second. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Yes. Barry, yes. Prentice, yes. Goodson, yes. Thank you. All right, administrative report. Um, okay, so um, because last week um, I was out that day, I did not report on the Great. account balance for 519. Um, our balance was $1,658,616. This week, the account balance, because tax receipts are starting to come in, is one million seven hundred and sixty thousand and thirty eight dollars. Um, <coughs> other than that, uh, don't really have anything to report on. Okay. So we, uh, uh, we, at one point, we decided <coughs> to hold off on some spending issues until we got tax revenue. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember what those spending issues were, but... Uh, I believe we put a freeze on any unnecessary spending or something. It was... Well, if it's unnecessary, why are we well, spending I mean, it you anyway? Know, or like, you know, like things that didn't have to happen. Non-urgent. Non-urgent, sorry. Not okay. non-necessary. Right. Non-urgent. Thank you. So is there a figure we're looking for before we can start spending the money again? No, but what <laughs> Elaine and I talked about is that we, for next week's meeting, we would do basically a cash position, cash flow discussion, okay. um, projecting a little farther out so that you can have an informed conversation. All right, good. Yeah. Thanks. Did the proper tax bills just go out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you get one? Did you get one? <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, we, uh, yeah, we got you have mine if you... Well, we, we, we paid off our mortgage a few months ago, mm. or last time, and the tax bill came, and I ignored it like I always do, because... Oh, the bank? Oh, because the mortgage... The bank paid it, yeah. and then we were late oh. on our last tax bill, so I felt like a deadbeat. Mm. So I want to make sure that I pay this one on time. Yes, yes, don't ignore out. your tax bill anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those are for you now. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you everybody who's paying early and up front or whatever. Um, yeah. 
We're going to move on to the signature file. Yep. Okay. So we have the select men's minutes, meeting minutes for May 26th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Kelly Goodson. Roll call vote. You said yes. Here, yes. 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 <coughs> Goodson, yes. The payroll is $31,223.91. The accounts payable is $7,312.64. And year to date, we have spent $3,304,548.24. Don't we have to vote on you have to the expenditures? Yeah. Oh. From the payroll and yeah. payroll and, and payable. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's been a while since That's I've shared. That's okay. All right. So I'm making a motion that the pay is that how I do it? A motion to yeah. approve to approve the payroll. I'm so sorry. It's That's been a while okay. since I've shared. Thirty-one thousand two hundred and twenty-three dollars and ninety-one cents. Second. Roll call vote. You said yes. Fair yes. Prentice yes. Good yes. And then we'll do it again for the accounts payable. And my apologies. I make a motion to approve $7,312.64. Second. Roll call. You said yes. Fair yes. Prentice yes. Good and yes. Oops. Um, certificate of Authority for Municipalities from Citizens Bank. That's so I can... Um, you can be the, the signer. Card. Okay. Yeah, it's still on okay. the Karen Anthony. So we just sign it? Oh, like, do we vote? Yeah, you know? I don't know if you need to have a motion to have me be. Um, Probably should. Go a signer? Or Can't hurt. Just Can't hurt, right? Yeah, yep. go ahead. So I make a motion to allow Keith Myers to uh, have the authority for municipalities at Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank Authority. Second. Any more discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. You said yes. Fair yes. Prentice yes. Puts in yes. Reissued RFI for broadband coverage in Tamworth, but we already talked about that, right? Yes, and now, um, did we make a motion on that? We did not, I don't believe. To resend the letter. To resend the letter. letter. Yeah. Okay. We didn't. All right. So motion to reissue the RFI. So I'll make a motion to reissue the RFI for broadband coverage in Tamworth. Second. Roll call vote. You said yes. Fair yes. Prentice yes. Good and yes. And then we have a tax abatement correction for map 212, lot 17, for $3,011. I make a motion to approve that. Second. Discussion? Roll call vote. You said yes. Fair yes. Prentice yes. Fits in yes. Point of information. Is that an abatement or is it a correction from a previous abatement? It's an correction from a previous abatement. Thank you. All right, and now the selectmen's updates. Richard, do you want to start? Uh, this past week, I went to my first uh, cemetery trustees meeting. Uh, it was very interesting. I had no idea how many cemeteries there were in in Tamworth. Uh, and one particular item that did come up was the question about insurance coverage. And I sent that along to the administrator to find out what what coverage uh, do the cemeteries have and. If it's not covered, what would they need to do to get covered? Mm -hmm. And one question I guess I was thinking now that I had for the trustees is, who actually owns the monuments? Is it the individual or? The individual. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, so I guess that would be, it's a two-part question then. If there's, right. if, if there's damage to a monument, is that covered? If there's damage to property owned by the trustees, is that covered? Because it could be two yeah. different right. Yep. Okay. So, that was it. Carl? I was out of commission last week. I had COVID-19. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so glad you're feeling better. But, Seems like you got through it quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was just a few days where I felt pretty poor. So, I really have nothing to report. Uh, I went to the planning board meeting last night, and... Um, Pat covered some of the things which were discussed uh, around broadband, which was great. We talked about CIP 
And, um, and in the context of the planning board planning its own CIP spending, um, we started talking a little bit about the master plan because that's not represented. So I'm trying to find out what cost would be associated with work on the master plan. The planning board had talked about um, not not tackling it as an entire overhaul, um, but but looking at parts as they came up as a need in town or they were identified as a need in town. And um, so Pat's economic development group, they tweaked the, the economic, the, what's the title of that chapter? Economic development. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we really, we really work yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's an interesting way to tackle things too. So I would say to, um, you know, if you look at the RSA around planning, what the planning board's role is in town, it talks about, you know, updating, creating, updating, and um, using a master plan to work within your town. So um, there's. It, it's on the internet. It's on the website, so you can look at that. There's one copy back there. Uh, it's a really cool document, even if a lot of it's, you know, verging on outdated because it's very data heavy. Uh, and it was in 2008. So I would just say that um, it's a great thing to be acquainted with, even though it's not our purview to create it. It is our purview to know things about the town. And perhaps if we see areas that are connected to the master plan that we would like to encourage people to address um, as far as digging deeper to understand where the town is now. So I was just looking at the housing chapter before this meeting because that's certainly an issue in town right now. Um, so that was an interesting discussion. We also talked about the CIP. Um, I'm going to the fire ward meeting on June 2nd um, to get their CIP information. And we did send out the letter to the department heads that we agreed on two meetings ago, acknowledging the good work that the town uh, employees have done in the face of COVID's disruptions. That's probably the With the uh, master plan discussion, yeah. have you seen the work that the library has done yeah. On their the demographics. Yeah. And community statistics. Well, and Betsy, what you one thing you missed last week is Betsy Lochran oh. came to ask us like what we saw as um, work that the library could be doing and had a great conversation sharing those statistics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the library is right on right now. Yeah. So that was it for me. Great. Thanks, Leanne. Um. I actually was under the weather for a lot of last week, too. Um, four negative COVID tests later, I'm still masking up just to be on the safe side, although I feel very symptom, well, almost symptom free. Um, but I did meet with Chris Pappas today at the transfer station with Richard, um, and I thought it was a really great um, interaction. Um, he really had a compassionate ear to listen to some of the town's concerns. Um, and just like the overall issues that the state is dealing with and um, I don't know, I just felt like it was really nice having him just come to our small town and compassionately listen to some of our woes. Um, and hopefully he's going to be a good advocate on the other side of it too. Um, he's going to try to connect us with some good people to be involved with, with improving the transfer station. And, um, yeah, anyway, I just really appreciated his um, interest and involvement. Um, and, and it was when, great to be there to discuss with Glenn and with Tim, you know, and that really spearheaded that discussion that happened tonight was getting all those minds mm -hmm. together at the same time. And the one particular thing we asked for his assistance, Representative Pappas' assistance, is to understand better why Tamworth didn't this year qualify for grants under the Northern Border Regional Commission. Uh, it's based on economic data, and some of the surrounding towns did qualify. Northern mm -hmm. Border Regional Commission. Some of the surrounding towns do qualify, and Tamworth did not, indicating that we are in better financial shape than Sandwich or some of our neighbors. And that's hard to understand, uh, because they use a set of economic data that was not clear. Uh, and we'd like to know how often they update it. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, maybe next year, we would qualify. And they, uh, the... 
Northern Border Regional Commission uh, funds infrastructure grants. It's a clearer match than the USDA was. Uh, and their funding percentages can be even higher than the USDA. Mm -hmm. So whatever we can do to make the transfer station improvements more affordable for the taxpayer, you know, we want to forge ahead with that. And I missed something. Did, did he say that our data wasn't clear? or Nope. No. No, he's just going to look into... He's going to look into it. Yeah. What, what, what made us not qualify? Right. And what data do they rely on or how often do they update? Mm -hmm. Right, and if we can reapply next year and hopefully get it. Mm -hmm. Just going to be a little bit more helpful, you know, on that end of it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's about all I have to report on as part of selectman duties. I do just want to add, Keats, it wasn't in your report, but um, speaking of CIP, which you know is like trying to spread capital uh, spending out over time and lining things up so we don't get big big hits all at once, and you should share the fire department grant. Yeah, well, hopefully we will um, get in on time. I'm still waiting for the invoice on that. Uh, but there's a grant... Um, State level grant that gives fifty thousand dollars to cover the cost of the SUV that the fire department is purchasing, and um, so yeah. Good so that would be great. So that was unanticipated. That was unanticipated. It was something that when I was training in, in Sandwich for this position, she made me aware of. So yeah. Right. yeah. Well, and competes fifty. For fifty thousand, um, and the vehicles, like with all the bells and whistles, is about sixty-two, I think, or maybe. Yeah, the town has to. It has to be applied by by June third. It has to be delivered by December thirty first, which this vehicle will be. And we have to. The town has to make a ten percent contribution, which is obviously budgeted. Right. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. 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 So it's money that's already budgeted for this year to be spent. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're working with Richard to get the invoice from the vehicle dealership so that I can. Yeah. It really takes a village. Or two. Or two. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. And another opportunity for public input. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Are you saying goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. 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 Putting up for the, for 15 or 20 years, and we really won't be aware of this. Uh, we've requested a build out analysis, mm. and it's actually going to be going in um, the CIP that we voted on that we would have it for one of our requests. Right. And the other thing we just talked in I'm general. I'm sorry, build out analysis on? Uh, build, building, build out analysis is um, a, a program um, that we. It, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost. But I mean, on what, though? On, 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 the, on the land of Tim. On the land of Tim. Oh, land. Oh, okay. Yeah. Develop, okay. Build out analysis of that. Got it. And the other thing, more in general, and I'm not sure whether it belongs here or not, but I think everyone should think about it. Um, why don't we think about who would be responsible for trying to get uh, a community garden? We'll talk about the people. The, the, when you think about older people, younger people, People that don't have room enough to have a garden, but sustainability is important. And um, it seems to me, and so I was told, well, Pat, just figure out what department, I said, I don't know what department it belongs to, but the thing is it would benefit the town, and mm -hmm. it would be perhaps on town land, which you're responsible for, for town land. And it's just something to think about whether you as selectmen would feel this is a good thing that we could maybe do for not much money. And that's, I just well, to it just as like a blanket thought on it, like when I first hear that, I do think probably the rec department yeah, would be the I one think. that would fit under the most. Um, and I definitely think it would be worth bringing it up to him the next time he's here to see if he has, I mean, he also has some land over there that, I mean, a garden can be any size. So, um, I don't know, just something that we could see if he has interest in it. Or any background, because I will say, as a gardener, it definitely helps to know what you're doing. Yeah. Parents waiting for T-ball can be weeding. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, picking the peas for, you know, to have when they get home from dinner, you know? The Conservation Commission may have thoughts on it as well, and maybe mm -hmm. some land that they have that 
Are they have easements That's a great on? idea too, Richard. So it could be. I can bring that up to the conservation both. commission, and we can bring it up to Dan, Dan yep. when he's here. But I think it's a good. And it also sort of correlates when um, the library was here, us thinking about how to um, help with that poverty census, you know, so it, it is multifaceted. So thank you for that. Any other public input? Hearing none, I'm going to make a motion to go into non-public under RSA 91-A colon 32C. Second. Yeah. At the glare is 721. 721. Uh, roll call vote. Did you say yes? Yes. Prentice, yes. Who seconded it? I didn't hear. Uh, um, Leanne. Good and yes. Okay. All right, I make a motion to come out of non public. Under RSA 91-A colon 32C at 7.35 p.m. And those motion, uh, those minutes will not be sealed. Second. Just said yes. Very yes. Prentice yes. Goodson yes. Uh, passes and we will adjourn. Thank you all for being And the time is 7.36. 7.36. Adjourned.